Hello students, my name is Dr. Saif, greetings from India. I will continue my lecture on how to read 12 EDCG. In my previous video presentation, I have already covered rhythm, rate and PR interval. Now in this video, we are going to talk about the QRS complex, ST segment and T wave abnormalities. So let's start with QRS complex. The QRS complex is a very important part of ECG. Its duration is very important to classify tachyarrhythmia into uh, two important uh, segregations. That is narrow complex tachycardia in which the QRS is narrower than 0.12 second and broad complex tachycardia in which the QRS duration is more than 0.12 second. The, the differentiation into two types of tachyarrhythmias are very important because, um, because the treatment is different. The narrow complex tachycardia, the most common one is the supraventricular tachycardia which may be regular or irregular. When it is regular, it is known as AVRT that is atrioventricular reentrant tachycardia. When SVT is irregular, then uh, we call it as atrial fibrillation. On the other hand, the QRS du if QRS duration is more than 0.12 second, that is broad complex tachycardia, the most common reason is ventricular tachycardia. The less common one is the SVT with abrasions, that is aberrant conduction into the ventricles, most commonly due to the bundle branch block. The broad complex tachycardias are dangerous compared to narrow complex tachycardia. Now look at this ECG. Rhythm is regular, heart rate is 1500 upon RR interval that is uh, 10 uh, small boxes so the heart rate is 150. P is not clearly visible before QRS complex in lead 2. So probably it is embedded into the QRS complex. The QRS duration, if you look at it, is uh, just one small box that is 0 0.04 second. So the diagnosis is the narrow complex tachycardia. Now we will look at the broad complex tachycardia. Of this ECG uh, of a 60 year old male presenting with sudden loss of consciousness. Look at the QRS duration, which is more than five small boxes, so more than 200 millisecond or 0.2 second. Therefore, mostly this is ventricular tachycardia. Another example of broad complex tachycardia in a 30 year old female presenting with sudden onset of palpitation, otherwise, she was normal. Now, describe this ECG. So, this is a regular broad complex tachycardia because there is a typical LBBB morphology in lead uh, V1. There is a deep S wave that is typical in LBB and uh, notched R wave in lead V6 and lead 2. Okay, and even lead 3, there is a notched R wave, M shaped R wave, and uh, that is why this is. The narrow complex, uh, uh, broad complex tachycardia, SVT with the uh, LBBB, left ventral branch block. So whenever you look at this kind of rhythm, the broad complex tachycardia, you have to uh, treat it urgently because this is associated with hypotension. It is an emergency non-perfusing rhythm and any time it could convert to the ventricular fibrillation so you have to defibrillate you have to cardiovert over here so whenever you find a chaotic irregular deflections of varying amplitude on an ECG lead in lead 2 uh, no identifiable P wave or QRS complexes or T wave definitely this is a ventricular fibrillation but always check your uh, chest uh, lead and electrodes sometimes they are misplaced and and sometimes they are not uh, they are disconnected so probably leading to this kind of uh, rhythm which is truly not a 
or ventricular fibrillation. So you always check clinically the patient's uh, uh, pulse rate and also the pulse, carotid pulse. And if you find there is no carotid pulse, definitely you should start the CPR. Okay. Now after QRS complex, we have discussed, we will go to ST segment. The ST segment is an interval between the ventricular depolarization and repolarization. Okay. So it is important to know this ST segment because it is its elevation or depression is associated with various uh, uh, cardiac pathologies. Okay. So it starts at J point and the J point is the point where S wave ends. Okay, so that is your J point on isoelectric line. So suppose J point is elevated or depressed that also is suggestive of ST elevation or depression. Okay, so ST segment starts at J point and ends at the initiation of T wave. So where the T wave takes off, there is your ST segment end. Okay. So what will be the information which we can draw from examining the ST segment? We need to see whether it is elevated or it is depressed with respect to isoelectric line. Okay. So for ST elevation, look for always J point. As I said, ST elevation is always a serious issue in cardiology, especially when it is associated with ischemic uh, cardiac problem acute MI and all okay and whenever patient presents with typical chest pain and has ST elevation always always suspect ST elevation but also look at the previous ECGs uh, for ST uh, segment analysis the non ischemic causes of ST elevations are also there like left ventricular hypertrophy pericarditis ventricular septal uh, space rhythm that is a pacemaker rhythm and uh, hyperkalemia also can cause ST elevation left ventricular aneurysm acute pericarditis is also a cause of ST elevation common cause of ST elevation okay so you should look, rule out all non ischemic cause also now look at this ECG look for the ST segment elevation in lead 1 lead AVL these are lateral leads and also the precordial leads examine ST elevation in V1, V2, V3 and V4, V5, V6 everywhere. So there are a lot of ST elevations in multiple leads and suggestive of acute MI in anterolateral wall of left ventricle. Okay. What do you see in this ECG? Again, you see uh, ST elevations in many uh, leads, okay, and even um, lead 1, AVL, and uh, V1 to V6 everywhere. You see, again, this is, a, this is an example of uh, anterolateral MI. Another example of ST elevation in lead 2, 3, and AVF. So, this is um, this is probably the inferior wall MI because the uh, inferior wall MI presents like this in ST elevation in lead 2, D3 and AVF. What is heart rate over here? Can you tell me the heart rate? So heart rate is actually seems to be low that is 300 upon uh, RR interval or uh, 5.5 large boxes so the heart rate may be in this case 54 per minute sinus bradycardia inferior wall mi usually presents with sinus bradycardia or bradyarrhythmia or sometimes av blocks so you have to look for pr interval as well in this case probably the pr interval is normal so far we have seen many ecgs with st segment elevations now look at this ecg can you see the ST segments are depressed in various leads, in especially in lead 1, lead 2, lead 3 and uh, also in V2, V6, V2 to V6. So there are multiple uh, global ST depression 
and which is a sign of myocardial ischemia and it may be harbinger of acute MI. ST depression can also be seen as a side effect of uh, digoxin overdose and sometimes uh, uh, tachycardia more than 150, 180 per minute can also lead to ST segment depression. So ST segment depression is usually caused by subendocardial ischemia. Sometimes it may be due to unstable angina. Okay, so after we have completed the ST segment analysis, we will go for connected T wave and look for its contour and orientation, whether this is positively deflected or negatively deflected. Okay, so here comes your T wave, which is a representation of ventricular re repolarization. Okay, and usually it is upright in lead 2. T wave is always upright in lead 2, but sometimes it may be inverted. So whenever there is a high or tall or peak T waves, definitely there is a problem in heart in terms of whether it may be a hyperkalemia or ischemia, MI, myocardial injury, myocarditis also can lead to high peak T waves and left bundle branch block typically presents with peak T wave in lead V1, V2, V3, etc. Okay. T wave may be inverted in case of myocardial ischemia as well and also hypokalemia, hypomagnesemia and cerebral hemorrhage. So look for T wave inversion, suppose it is global. So we will look into example, observe a small, uh, the tall T waves over here in lead V1, V2, V3. Hmm. So always you look at T wave, examine the R wave, okay, and and look at the chest lease where R wave usually positive. So if you look at R wave and look at T wave and you see the T wave is um, the height of T wave is more than two third of height of R wave, it is said to be tall T wave, okay, and may be suggestive of many conditions I have listed before. Small flattened or inverted T waves can be caused by physiological issues like age, race, hyperventilation, anxiety, ischemic conditions can cause the inverted T waves, drugs, hypokalemia, hypomagnesemia, etc. So this is an example where you can see the T wave is inverted in almost all leads. So T wave inversion may be considered to be evidence of myocardial ischemia when it is at least one millimeter deep, presents in two continuous leads that have dominant R waves and also dynamic, not present in the older ECGs and it, may, it will be changing over time and will disappear after the anomaly or the biochemical abnormality is corrected like hypokalemia corrected the t wave should go away ischemia is corrected the t, uh, t t wave should be normalized in contour and shape so after we have completed our all steps of ecg interpretation the last step remains to diagnose okay so diagnosis is very very important because after that you have to treat right so after careful analysis of ECG, you have to make a proper ECG diagnosis to say whether this is normal or abnormal. If the ECG is abnormal, what is the specific abnormality in ECG in terms of its rhythm or rate, PR interval, QR complex, IC segment and T wave. And then only you can have a comprehensive treatment, urgent treatment based on diagnosis. So thank you so much. In summary, I would say that no need to be afraid when you see ECG next time, holding it in your hands, follow steps of interpretation, six to seven steps of interpretation of ECG will definitely lead you to some diagnosis of it. And do not look at the ECG diagnosis on paper, which is usually printed. So that is wrong. You never look at that at first place you make your own diagnosis then match with that 
and most of the time that diagnosis may not be correct also which is there printed on the ECG paper so don't look at that and uh, ask your seniors like colleagues doctors nurses technicians etc uh, and correlate cl clinically always sometimes ECG may be wrong also okay there may be uh, uh, wrong lead placement or disconnected leads will, will uh, give you the wrong ECG waveforms okay so thank you so much a uh, few very nice websites to learn ECGs are mentioned over here and uh, thank you for listening to my videos it is always a pleasure to teach you uh, in physical form and online thank you so much